in this part. Now we're gonna be on the so we're gonna go up to the sides. Please stand. Yes. <laughs> didn't say run. <laughs> the Lord be with you. We are gathered here in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a pri privilege on behalf of Alicia and Dan to welcome all of you who are here sharing in this meaningful day in their lives. We remember that where two or more are gathered in Jesus' name, he enters even here into our midst. Uh, as we move forward today, I should have done this earlier, it's on me. We would love to have you enjoy the fullness of this uh, without the use of a lens. Wasn't that good? Was that subtle? Did I <laughs> just enjoy the, uh, the photographer and videographer doing their good work? And, and boy, but I'll tell you what, when I announce them at the end and the kiss part, paparazzi it. Okay, good. All right. <sighs> I would like to offer each of us the unique opportunity, because these days don't come around all that often, to reflect on the people that mean this to us, those who have said I do and I will, through their actions more than through a ceremony. God bless you as we reflect on those who have gone before us 
and those who couldn't be with us today, the important ones in our lives. Let us pray together. Loving God, we turn to you this day as a source and giver of love. We rejoice in the experience of your presence and are thrilled by knowing your joy in this celebration of commitment. Bless Alicia and Dan by your grace in this decision. Assist them now with the assurance of your power that they may honor the vows they make today. And bless each of us with your closeness, your love, and your light. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. We'll move up in a second. We are gathered here in the presence of God to join Alicia and Dan in marriage, which is instituted of God and to be held in honor by all people. Those who enter into marriage are to respect and love each other, confess weaknesses, and to embrace with compassion when one expresses weakness. To comfort each other and to provide for each other and their household for as long as they both shall live. And so we will hear your declaration of that intent. Alicia, will you have Dan to be your husband and will you pledge your life to him in all love and honor and all duty and service and all faith and tenderness to cherish him according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? Will you? I will. <laughs> Dan, will you have Alicia to be your wife and will you pledge your life to her in all love and honor and all duty and service and all faith and tenderness to cherish her according to the ordinance of God and the holy bond of marriage? Will you? I will. Wonderful. Now let's come on up. I'd like to introduce our readers, Lori and Matt. Right about here. Good wait face me still because they're going to read first. Come right to your face out. I don't know if this works. Sorry, that's me. A reading from the Epistle to the Corinthians. Now, I put before you the best way of all. If I could speak all languages, both human and angelic, and speak without love, I am no more than a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. I could have the power to foretell the future, to penetrate all mysteries, and even have the faith necessary to move mountains. If I am without love, I am nothing. Were I to give away to the poor all that I possess, and even give up my body as a sacrifice for another, <clears throat> if I am without love, it will do me no good whatsoever. Love, you see, is patient and kind. Love is never jealous. Love is not boastful or conceited. It is not rude and never seeks its own advantage. It does not take offense or store up grievances. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but finds joy in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. <clears throat> love will never come to an end, so God has given three enduring qualities, faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Thank you, Lori. That was beautiful. Apache wedding blessing. Now you will feel no storms, for each of you will be shelter to the other. Now you will feel no cold, for each of you will be warmth to the other. Now there is no loneliness, for each of you is companion to the other. You are two persons, but there is one life before you and one home. Turn together and look at the road you traveled. To reach this, the hour of your happiness. It stretches behind you into the past. Look to the future that lies ahead. A long and winding adventure-filled road, whose every turn means discovery, new hopes, new joys, new laughter, and a few shared tears. May happiness be your companion. May beauty surround you both in the journey ahead and through all the years to come. Go to this day to your dwelling place and enter into your days together. May your days be good and long upon the earth. That was lovely. Thank you both very much. I've been moved by these readings. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, which was the scripture reading first, um, was asked for by the couple that I first married back, back. And at that point, I remember thinking to myself, when I am an older man, will this scripture still be meaningful to me? Love, you see, is patient and kind. It is never jealous or boastful or rude. It doesn't look for its own advantage. I was very moved by that. Um, will never come to an end. And you know what? It's still alive to me today. 
I look into hazel green or gray blue eyes and remember that you're alive and breathing in this place as that scripture is. And I thank you for choosing it. As well as the Apache wedding prayer, it's interesting because the first reading has to do with just theory. This is the theory of love. There's no person mentioned. Uh, it's, it's a larger, it's deep, but it's just a larger reflection. The second one is a community writing to two people. And it's just all about you two. There's if no one else around the planet. Now you will be, and this you will be. And it's a super focused in, this intensity. And, and the same comes with this Rob, Robert Fulgham reading that you have for me from beginning to end. It, this one is very focused as well. So we go from theoretical to an intimate and personal. And, I, I, and believe me, I'm not saying anything negative about theoretical. It's just you can take that or leave it, as opposed to somebody looking at you and saying, now you will feel no pain. See, it's a difference. So Fulgham writes, you have known each other from the first glance of acquaintance to this point of commitment. At some point, you decided to marry. From that moment of yes to this moment of yes, indeed, you have been making promises and agreements in an informal way. All those conversations that were held riding in a car over the meal during long walks or, or during long walks, and all those sentences that began with when we're married and continued with I will, and you will, and we will. Those late night talks that included someday and somehow and maybe, and all those promises that are unspoken matters of the heart, well, all these common things and more are the real process of a wedding. This is simply a point. The symbolic vows that you are about to make are a way of saying to one another, you know all those things we've promised and hoped and dreamed? Well, I meant it, every word. Look at one another and remember, you just did. Okay, stop looking at one another. <laughs> and remember this moment in time. It's like you read this. Oh, wait, you did. Okay. <laughs> Before this moment, you have been many things to one another, acquaintance, friend, companion, lover, dancing partner, and even teacher, for you have learned much from one another in these last few years. Now you shall say a few words that will take you across another threshold of life, and things will never quite be the same. For after these vows, you shall say to the world, this, this is my husband, this is my wife. As I reflected on the three of these readings, each one of them a gift in their own way, it became clear to me that there was some element of this that had to have a predisposition, something that had to ha already exist in order for the two of you to come to points like this, in order for you to know love of which Paul wrote in the first writing and how to express it and how to receive it. And as intimate as these three pieces are, as intimate as the pieces you gave me about, <laughs> you're visiting Paul in Boulder. And, uh, hi, Paul. And, and, um, <laughs> and then you guys met each other and, you know, we're not gonna go in the, 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 the two of them were dating or any of that, is that not a? Oh, come on, somebody needed to laugh at that one person. Not even Paul. Paul was like, no. <laughs> um, and then from college and on, this, these uh, intimacies that, you, that grew were a big deal. And you were in love within a week with each other. And you've kept up all these things. Man, you guys are outside all the time. Every time we've met, we've been out on a porch someplace or, you know, there's just walking involved and there's, and whether it be a mindful triathlon or whatever the other elements have been that you've been outside, it's mattered. I think the gratitude of finding one another and expressing your need for one another has been one of the most wonderful things of getting to know you. Now, having said that again, as if it were fourth reading, I'd like to give you a gift, offer a gift that allowed this moment to be. For neither of you were raised in a vacuum, and you didn't know how to love in a vacuum. You were taught, and you practice loving back and caring. Now with Paul, that's on my. You practice loving back and the way that you cared for people and were received or rejected by them. So I'd like you to turn around and receive this gift, all the way around. Switch hands. So chance, it's us, hi. <laughs> I know. I know you wanted a jet ski, Dan. Um, 
<laughs> this us that's gathered about you is your community. And it's the reason that we can speak in the, of the broader brushstroke of love and the intimacies of it. And it's the reason that we can look at you and wish the Apache wedding prayer or the Fulgham's uh, poem or your reflections on your life and say, yes, this is what we want for you. And so this group is going to make the first vow because they are the ones that began this process. You'll just finish with, we will. I'm going to ask you a question. I'll say, will you? And you simply respond, we will. Will you in the days, decades, years to come, respond with the same energy, enthusiasm, and presence when you were called upon again by this couple, whether it be in sickness or in health, in want or in rich, will you? We will. They almost all said yes. It was so great. So now that you have witnessed their vow to you, we will witness your vows to one another. If you would face each other. Alicia, repeat after me. I, Alicia, take you, Dan, to be my husband. I, Alicia, take you, Dan, to be my husband. And promise before God, our family, and friends. And promise before God, our family, and friends. That I will share my life with you. That I will share my life with you. In love and honor. In love and honor. Through joy and sorrow. Through joy and sorrow. In wealth and poverty. In wealth and poverty. In sickness and health. Sickness and health. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. That's lovely. And I, Dan, take you, Alicia, to be my wife. I, Dan, take you, Alicia, to be my wife. And promise before God, our family and friends. And promise before God, our family and friends. That I will share my life with you. That I will share my life with you. In love and honor. <laughs> in love and honor. Through joy and sorrow through joy and sorrow, in wealth and poverty, in wealth and poverty, in sickness and health, in sickness and health, for as long as we both shall live, for as long as we both shall live. That's great. Joe, have you a ring? Place this on her left ring finger. This ring I give you, Alicia. This ring I give you, Alicia. <laughs> in token and covenant. In token and covenant. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. That's great. Amber. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. This ring I give you, Dan. This ring I give you, Dan. In token and covenant. In token and covenant. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. That was wonderful. They're going to go to the geode, so just keep an eye. Go ahead and walk, and I'll talk about the geode over the music. I've done uh, over 300 weddings in my career, and I love them. And I've never had this expressed uh, symbolically in any wedding. This is a geode that the two of them are going to crack. And um, as they discover what is uh, held within, they're going to take it and offer it to yeah. their parents. Got to find the sweet um, spot anyway. This constant sense of discovery and returning. Mm -hmm. Let's try the top. You could crisscross one to each family. Perfect. <laughs> 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 
Ich mal die Tür. I would invite you all to stand, please, as Alicia uh, takes a moment in silent prayer before Mary, with the memory that this feminine expression of God's tender love for us uh, is so powerful in a moment like this. Please be seated. Hands all together, all the way. Tender God, you have heard their words, and you have witnessed their lives, and you know their hearts, for their very hearts are in your hands. So we, the community gathered about Alicia and Dan on this day, ask that you would guide them with the perfection of your presence, protect them with the power of your own arms, and so radiate your love, beauty, and truth into them that their home will become known as a place of compassion and reception for all. We offer them to you this day, for we have in the past, and you have been faithful. In Christ's name, amen. Well, by the authority committed unto me as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I declare that Dan and Alicia are now husband and wife according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state of Colorado in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whom therefore God has joined together, let no one divide. You may kiss. steps down so before I introduce you let's stand together it doesn't look very paparazzi but that's okay it's on you whichever you want to be get ready for your hands again for it gives me great joy to introduce you for the very first time mr. and mrs. Dan and Elisa Fetchick Okay, get together, off your right arm. <laughs> 